people get the idea that uh, meditation is um, that I need to, I need got to do this meditation. I got to meditate. I should meditate more. And when I think about that, that always gave me a little bit of anxiety. Like I'm supposed to do this thing and I'm supposed to get something from it. And uh, it just puts a lot of pressure on me. And then I realized that the purpose of my meditation was to um, get myself into a meditative state. So then that really opened things up to if it's really the purpose is to just to allow me to get into a meditative state, meaning beyond my normal uh, limiting beliefs and the overactive mind and mind programs and that kind of thing. If I get to a place that kind of allows me more of that presence, then that's a good thing. So I found that certain things work better for me than just to sit in a certain position and do my best to push away my thoughts. So the things that really work best for me was um, things like clean, cleaning carpets, um, sanding wood, shining metal, uh, doing the dishes, um, things that kind of took one thing that was dirty and then made it clean or shiny, which kind of plays into my whole purpose of why I'm on this planet is to raise the frequency of, of whatever. And I realized that once I was doing that, I really got into this, this great meditative state. And I still, I, I still do just a regular meditation in the morning, but it's um, sometimes I'll do it for a couple of hours if that works but I don't do it every day for a couple of hours. I don't have that kind of discipline in me. And I feel like it. I start um, questioning myself of why I'm doing this. Am I doing this for really the benefits that's supposed to be given me or am I doing it for an egoic thing that I can now tell people, well, I meditate every, every morning for two hours. Isn't that great? <laughs> so um, I do meditate for a little bit in the morning. And what really helps me also is to meditate to uh, a recording of something that uh, either is more etheric music that helps me kind of get lost in that, or maybe it's a channeling of something like The Way of Mastery on YouTube or uh, ChristReturns.org to listen to those recordings that kind of helps me to sit in that consciousness. So if my purpose is to kind of raise myself into a higher consciousness or at least remove or let go of the thoughts that are constantly trying to run my life, then that's, that's really why I do my meditation. <clears throat> so the, the question is, is meditation the answer to everything? And that, that's one of those questions that like, if I was in the courtroom, I couldn't say yes or no. Um, it is and it isn't. Um, it's a great tool and it helps me to come to practice more coming into my center and you know, it's better than not being in your center. It's better than um, being in your thoughts all the time and just being in a reactive mode. But if I can start to pull myself back and then get more into awareness, just being in awareness, not that my mind is aware, but that I am the presence of awareness. I am conscious awareness. That's a, that's a distinction between that I have a conscious mind or that I'm being conscious or that I'm being aware, it's different than that. It's, it's not that I or my mind is more aware, is that I, the truth of me, is awareness. And that's it. So that's what I like playing with in my meditation is that getting into that state where I can realize that there's thoughts in front of me in my awareness, but because they're in my awareness, I must be that awareness. So then I sit back in that. And I, I kind of do this like I'm sitting back, but it's actually everything. Um, so yes, it's a great tool to um, cause ourselves more presence and more peace and more stillness, but it's not the answer to everything. And you can't, I haven't seen this yet where someone can uh, grow up and be born, uh, going through childhood, experiencing different uh, childhood traumas, and even things from uh, previous lives that create um, uh, mind programs and limiting beliefs and patterns in their life and heal that through meditation. I haven't seen that. I've seen where meditation is one of the tools and the other tool is to actually 
this, this, this is what this came up from. I was out on the land with uh, some beautiful people. And one of the guys asked, uh, how do I get out of my thoughts? How do I get out of my mind? And he said, you know, it's, it's meditation, right? And I know that's, that's the usual answer. You've got to meditate. But um, I know that meditation can actually be what's called a spiritual bypass. I'm, you know, love and light. I'm meditating. And on, on the one end of that, yes, this is all an illusion. This is a dream. On the other end of it, I still got to, I'm still in the physical body. So yes, meditation, but in order, what I told him for him to come out of his thoughts is to, instead of trying to push away the thoughts and run away from it, it can be running away through meditation, see the thoughts instead of, so here's how we kind of go through life. We're going through a life and we're, Things come at us, people say things and do things to us, and we automatically react. We kind of throw out a reaction and we go, go ahead, mind, speak for me. I need to assert myself. I need to protect myself. I'm feeling threatened here. And we just allow it to fly. And we associate and identify ourselves with that. But what I was telling him is that instead of just letting it fly, say, hold on a second and look right at it. Look right at the thought and start to question it because it, it, it tends to remove the energy behind it. And it's like, it's like the curtain on the Wizard of Oz got, got pulled back. It's all of a sudden this, this separate kind of part of myself that's been running the show, but now I'm looking at it going, hold on a second, is this really true? And that's the, that's the process is to ask it. This thought that I'm having in the moment is it really true or is it something that I've just chosen to believe and chosen to kind of speak for me? So the process of pulling yourself out of your thoughts and coming back, coming into more awareness is to allow that to come up and see it and look right at it and, and start to question it instead of just letting it run the show. Uh, and then once you've done that, then you can come into a meditation. And then if you want to start to process that where did that that thought come from where's the the genesis of that thought what part of my life did that start to get created start to and i started to believe that it was true so that's one real good part of meditation is you can just start to sit in that and just wonder about it and then once you've wondered about it you said okay I'm kind of find clear where that came from and then you let it go because there's no reason to hold on to it anymore or to um pull that apart and do all these different pieces and, and describe it in a hundred different ways. You know where it came from. It was either a, a valid uh, creation in the past or it wasn't. Either way, you're not there now. And you've hopefully learned from the experience. And there's something probably on the other side of that that is for you to learn or for you to experience. And then once you've processed just more of that, it's, it's like it's the coolest thing life just keeps on getting better. You start to um, lighten up and things get clearer and life gets better and better and better and your meditations get easier and easier. So don't you want that? <laughs> it's like, I know it's a rhetorical question, but it's like, if, you, if you're just um, happy with life just getting better, that's, that's a good thing. I always had this idea that I was going to have this big awakening like you hear about and uh, everything's going to be poof changed but that's kind of not who i am and that's not what i came here for this big you know instant transformation i came here to kind of do it my way and uh, my way is sort of it can be hard it can be a more difficult way than other people might do it but it's my way and my way was more of a stretched out journey and removing those layers and maybe add on another layer and then removing that layer and remove another layer. And it just, for me, it just really made it really solid. And um, now I, when I speak about it or when I speak about uh, healing work and those kind of things and life transformation and uh, spiritual awakening, I'm really grounded in it because I've had a lot of years working on it to really set it in and remove this stuff that was spiritual BS and the other stuff that, you know, didn't really make sense. So yes, meditation is an answer, but it's not the end of it. Meditation to bring yourself. So imagine that you're, you're out in this reactionary mode, 
meditation to get yourself back and centered and start to breathe again instead of instead of breathing very short and shallow <sighs> allow that to come over you allow that new presence of being to come over you it's not like you're going to become a, a monk in a day or something it's just that god isn't it doesn't that feel better just to get a little bit more presence a little bit more, more breath <sighs> and then go out there and, and see the world again and then as those things that used to really trigger you in the past start coming at you again it's kind of like you were actually giving these things to yourself as sort of um, tests on uh, where you are in the process. So as you process something, you meditate on it, and it was a certain reaction that you had, some kind of a theme in your life, you're going to see it again. But imagine that you are actually giving it to yourself. So you can kind of test yourself and see how good you're doing with this. And then you move through it in a much more um, gentle and graceful way. And then life just keeps on getting better and better and better. Before you know it, you know, time has passed and you look back at your life and you go, wow, I'm in a much different place than I was before. And I thought I knew who I was back then, but, you know, I'm getting pretty clear that, you know, all the thoughts that I had about myself weren't really true. So that's the other part of it is to look at the thoughts, question them and ask them, is this really something that I want to believe? I really want to hold on to. And if it's not, you know, you're, you have full permission to let it go and, and not be a part of your reality anymore. There might be some lag time in there because, you know, belief systems that have been held on to over decades and decades take a little time sometimes to, to fully let go of. So they'll, they'll keep on coming up sometimes, but you'll be in a much better place to, to really allow them to let go. Oh, let's see. let's do a little meditation. So here's a little meditation that really helps me uh, when I'm really, my thoughts are really going and I really need to get back to my center. So go ahead and close your eyes, take a deep breath. <sighs> Exhale all the way down, as far down as you can go. Inhale again. <sighs> I like breathing in through my nose and exhaling out of my mouth. And exhale all the way down. Inhale in your nose. All the way up and then exhale all the way down. <sighs> and I like putting a little voice behind my exhale. Kind of gives me that vibration in my chest that feels so good. And then I keep telling my shoulders just to relax a little bit more, a little bit more. Now I'm thinking about my face. I'm thinking about my jaw. And see how it's really, it, my jaw is really loose. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know what, maybe um, my mouth is frozen or something. It's frozen in the open position. <laughs> but if I think about really relaxing my jaw, that my muscles in my jaw let go and let my jaw just hang down. Now I'm breathing through an open mouth and partly through my nostrils. And now I think about my ears. Now I let those drop down. So now I've got my ears and my jaw relaxing. Then I go back to my shoulders because they tend to creep up a little bit again. I don't know about you, but when I have thoughts, my, my arm tenses up and my shoulders tense up. So I just recheck, let them go again. And then sometimes I get a little chill up my body that tells me that I'm doing a good job. Ah. <sighs> Shoulders come down again, face comes down again, ears come down. Now I think about my brain. And sometimes we don't even notice this, but this, our scalp around our brain, around our skull is tense. And you know how it feels when you, you're holding on to a thought and, and then you decide to just kind of completely relax. And your scalp, your the muscles around the skin around your your skull softens and when you can get all that softened then it starts to feel like something different so now i add on some tasks for my brain to engage in and the more tasks that i give my brain the more i can keep it occupied it's kind of like you go play over here <laughs> so one of the tasks that i do is Imagine breathing from my root, that's right in my, 
uh, my anus or my coccyx or the bottom of my spine. And I'm thinking about that area. It's kind of the grounded safety trust area, your, your first, it's your root. And when you think about that, it just, you think about kind of having that touching the earth. And then I have myself breathe up my spine over my head and exhale down the front. So it's like this, this loop. And what this is called is a microcosmic orbit. And what you're doing is you're creating actually energy in this part of your body. And martial artists some, sometimes call this the ocean of energy or spiritualists call it the second chakra or the sacral chakra. And it's known to be the center of your creativity and your sexuality and your expression, but it's a real good place to collect energy, collect chi or ki energy. So I'm looping up and going breathing it up my spine over my head, exhaling down, thinking about that spot, breathing up my spine, over my head, down the front, thinking about that spot. So every time I'm, I'm building up, it's like I'm collecting the energy there. And all the time I'm relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my jaw. So looping that breath, looping that breath, looping that breath. And then the next task is to soften my eyes. So my eyes are so soft, and my mouth is so relaxed that I can see through my eye, through my eyes, just my eyelashes are covering my, my eyes aren't squinched down so I can't see anything. They're very soft so I can, I can see kind of right here in front of me. And what I'm noticing is I'm saying to myself, hmm, there's a body, I'm, I'm animating this body and I can move things around. And I'm just kind of wondering at that. And the next thing I do is I take the tip of my tongue and I place it on the roof of my mouth just behind my front teeth. And it's said that there's an electrical circuit that happens when you do that. And we're all electrical beings. And when you connect the tongue with the top of the mouth, it's this ancient circuit that happens. And whether that's true or not, it doesn't really matter because you're giving your, your, your brain, <clears throat> excuse me, you're giving your brain another task to do. So whether it has the, you believe the story behind it, it doesn't even matter. Shoulders are soft, mouth is soft, jaw is soft, eyes are soft, tongue to the roof of the mouth, breathing up the spine, over the head, down the front. Hands are relaxed, either face down or up on your legs. Now what I do is that, because invariably <clears throat> thoughts will come in, I want to get my attention. And here's where I just, I allow them to come in. And then I think about the center of my heart. And sometimes if I'm really having a struggle with it, I might even tap, tap my heart and I tap it with a couple fingers, just tap it. Now, this is where I want to be. I'll take a breath. Relax your shoulders again. And that's it. That's the, that's the meditation that really helps me. You can do this for a long time if, that, if you're excited about that. But like I've learned um, from people who are wiser than me, um, do what you're excited about. And if, and if meditation is a burden to you and uh, it's not solely about your ego trying to control you and it's just not really exciting to you, then don't do it. Do something that helps you get into a meditative state or how, helps you to get more present. If it's um, playing darts on the wall and it causes you to really focus on just the dart hitting its mark and all you're thinking about is that dart, great. If it's something about riding a bicycle out on a long ride and you get into a meditative state. I used to get a meditative state when I did triathlons, when I would be out in the ocean swimming a mile or two miles and I get into this rhythm with the breath and the splashing and I'm, you know, I'm contemplating how many inches are in a mile by making the calculations in my, <laughs> you know, it's like whatever causes me to get into that meditative state. So, um, 
that's that's the part that really I get excited about is that something meditation or some form of movement meditation works for me and knowing that it's not about meditating it's about getting to a meditative state and doing the work and there's there's a um there's a dualistic kind of idea about this is that yes you are a divine being and you're not really here and this is a dream and that's all seems to be what's happening and this also you know you can't just stay in that the reality of that and have that have your life night your life not be affected anymore so you could say that you are one with all beings and you are the one and yet you still have a physical life so what i have chosen to do is sort of mix the two together that i know where i come from i know the truth that what i am is i am i am that presence i'm that light and um, anything beyond that is a thought and from that place that's where i go into you know healing work or to processing uh, old beliefs and limiting beliefs and old patterns and that kind of thing that i developed all along the way when i didn't realize what i was so i kind of mix the two together and that seems to work pretty pretty darn good so 